Well, you've done a lot of projects uh, and I know, you know, I'm the private money guy and known as the private money authority. I love private money. Yes. I'm guessing you're going to have to tell me because I don't know, but I'm guessing in your real estate investing career, you probably raised some private money, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I started. I was, I was a hundred K in debt, Jay, in the beginning when I started in real estate development with my restaurants, actually over that, I was over hundred K in debt. And essentially I didn't have any, anything extra. I had just come out of undergrad. I was going to school in tandem. Like whenever I had a, a free minute, like nights while I had the two restaurants, while I was getting into real estate investing. So when people give me the excuses of like, oh, I don't have time. I'm like, you don't even, when I was 21, I was all over the place. I barely slept, <laughs> but my family, you know, was willing to invest in me, at least the down payment. We had to go private, you know, we had to go hard money for the first loan, but at least I had enough to sustain the project, to keep the project going, put the down payment in and still make interest payments as I was going through these projects for, for sure. That was, mm. that was a huge thing. Right. Did you ever raise any private money, like from individuals, um, yeah. you know, aside from hard money? So you, you've raised private money from individuals, right? Yes. Yep. 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 For the down payment to pay the hard money. That's how I started. Like it was like, it was a lot. It was right. a lot. Basically <clears throat> any, any extra capital that I needed was funded by private money, essentially family, right. friends. So, what advice would you give to a real estate investor that perhaps hasn't raised any private money from individuals in the past? What um, advice would you give them on how to begin uh, attracting private money into their world? Of course, I coach this all the time, but I'm interested in your take on it since you've actually done it as well. Yes. Well, I was going to say, well, first off, you should be talking to Jay. That's step number one. <laughs> but I, I would say, you know, for me, it was really about knowing the numbers, right? Because you have to treat them like investors, like this is a business. You have to know the numbers like the back of your hand. And for me, when I was first starting, I didn't really know my numbers and I had my coach to lean on that could confidently say like, you know, Hey, I've done this for a really long time. Here are what the numbers look like. You know, here's the construction budget You know, here's what we're buying it for. Here's what we're going to put into it. And here's what we should be selling it for. And here are the numbers and the risk levels. You know, we should be in and out of this project within six to nine months. We're holding your money for a year maximum, things like that. And, you know, here's your percentage and, and things like, you know, that was super critical. So knowing and understanding those numbers. So if you've done it, if you have done real estate development before or any type of real estate project, you know, your numbers great. You can pitch that to your investors and keep it business. Emotion needs to be left out of it. Right. But if you don't know your numbers and you're stepping into this for the very first time, I hope that you partner with somebody who knows exactly what they're doing, or you have a coach that's walking you through the process because these are like, there are so many moving parts in real estate development. Yes. A lot of money to be made, but at the same token, there is a lot, there's a lot of risk and there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving elements. So if you're not a pro at it or don't have a coach with it, I would recommend that you at least JV joint venture with somebody who does, because there are so many different ways to creatively lay out deals. Um, you know, and I mean, you could even try to work a deal with the seller as well. I mean, there's all types of different things, you know, Ron, Ron Legrand with his, uh, <laughs> with his terms things, right? So there's always ways to creatively lay out the deal. It's just a matter of, knowing your numbers at the end of the day, because you can lay out whatever terms you want when it comes to that, but know your numbers hundred percent.